to me. I open the pace, they talk to me. Come on now, group walk for me. Urban Gorilla, that sauce on me. Yeah, I was shot, pay the cost, homie. He the boss man, he got up on the cross for me. He the boss man, he got up on the cross for me. He the boss man, he got up on the cross. Yeah, yeah. I open the pages, they talk to me. Come on now, bro, walk for me. Urban Gorilla, that sauce on me. Yeah, how was shy, pay the cost on me. He the boss man, he got up on that cross for me. He the boss man, he got up on that cross for me. He the boss man, he got up on that cross. Reigns overall. Go ahead. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel. To give repentance to Israel. And to be a savior and a prince to Israel, and not any other people on the planet Earth, right? So it only matters if you're an Israelite, descending from one of these 12 tribes, right? Coming in all shapes, all sizes, all colors, right? Now we can use color as a teaching tool, right? Because we know that the Bible says that Jesus is a so-called dark-skinned man. He had bronze feet, hair of wool, right? But as far as somebody saying that, you know, uh, it matters about your color, that's not true. Because the Israelites have been mixing with other nations for I don't know how long. And it's through the seed of the Father, right? So even back in slavery times, by the time we had came over here, it was black, brown, and yellow shades of slaves. And I have it in this book called Before the Mayflower, man. We got to put this in historic perspective, right? Hold this. It's the book of Hosea, chapter 7 and 8. Ephraim, he hath mixed himself among the people. Ephraim is a cake not turned. So that's just basically saying how the Ephraimites, right? How they were mixing themselves amongst other people. And if you see the so-called Puerto Ricans, you see that they're different shades of brown. They can be dark-skinned, you know, like Officer Watiza in, in the Tampa camp. And they can be as light as... Um, just of a lighter complexion, right? Like Officer Rob in, in um, Sakari, Miami, right? So Israelites range from a, diff, um, a different variety of colors, right? And I, I got another priest but just give me a second. So I got some historicity, right? This is Before the Mayflower, right? By Lerone Bennett Jr., right? And this is on, this is in chapter four. It's called Behind the, Cur the, uh, Behind the Cotton Curtain, right? For 200 years, black, brown, and yellow men and women were held in bondage in America. During these years, a social system of corrective, co as they yet not known, was erected from the framework of the most implicable race conscious yet observed in virtually in society. A curtain of cotton rained down on some four million human beings it had been a crime to teach these men and women, these same black, brown, and yellow men and women to do what? To read and write, and, be, and it became a crime for them to read the Bible. This is how we know Jesus is out of Israelites, man, right? It wasn't a crime for no goddamn indentured servant white man that, that was, in, that, that was uh, basically put in captivity by his own people to read the damn Bible. They weren't worried about no Bible, man, right? But it was a crime for us to read the Bible. Why? Because they knew we were the Israelites. And once we started to read these things, we were going to start remembering ourselves, man. You ain't going to be able to sit up and call us, oh, we the Gentiles, right? No, we're the children of God, man. And they didn't want us to know that. That's why, well, does anybody in the crowd know what started that turn of slave rebellion? The Bible. Right? Go ahead. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 12 and 9. Mine heritage is unto me as a speckled bird. The birds round about are against her. Come ye, assemble all the beasts of the field, come to devour. Right? So that's just basically further letting you know how Israelites are different shades of brown. Right? They could be dark skinned and they can be of a lighter complexion. So, you know, color really doesn't matter. It's all about, it's all about your father. Wherever your father goes back to is where you are. Because you can be as dark as Wesley Snipes, and as long as you got a so-called white man in your lineage, you won't be an Israelite, right? Or you can be you know, on your father's side, right? But if you, but you know, if you see Drake's son or Blake Griffin's son, these they, these children look like so-called white men, right? But they're Judites and uh, Levites at the end of the day. They're children of Israel. So. While you get to that, um, just uh, further going into the point on how um, we, we've always been a, a so-called speckled people. We've always come in different shades and, uh, and colors. This is uh, Genesis chapter 30 and verse 32. 
I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, and all the brown cattle among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and of such shall be my hire. So this is actually Jacob when he was working for, uh, for, for, uh, yeah, for Laban. He, he took for his hire the, spot, the speckled and spotted cattle. So, so uh, spiritually going back into, you know, um, prophesying that, that Israel would be uh, speckled and spotted just like it said in Hosea. I can just bring this out for edification of other people. This is Numbers chapter 1 and 18, and it reads, And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month, and they declared their pedigrees, right, keyword pedigrees, after their families by the house of their fathers, right? So your, so your, your, whatever you are, your lineage is dictated on whatever your father is. You pack your lineage, right? Yeah, because your father possesses the seed, right? Your mom is just a receptacle uh, used to bring uh, bring you to the earth, right? She has no bearing on your um, on your lineage, right? Because even even if you take it to a scientific uh, level, right, the amniotic sac is what separates the baby from the mother. They don't even share any blood. The only thing that they share is the food that she eats that's uh, absorbed through the amniotic sac. That's true. Yeah, that's that's the only thing. Blood doesn't even connect, right? So like if if a mother has AIDS, right, as long as she doesn't deliver that child through the vaginal canal, that child doesn't even get AIDS or get HIV, Salakia, right? So that just shows you that the blood between the baby and the mother has nothing to do with each other. It's all about the father. About the seed. Yeah, and, and real quick, expounding on that, I'm going into the science behind it. If you even look into, like, the science behind sperm, all that is is, is blood cells. Blood cells. 